Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about Chat GPT. So let's get into it. So the question in question was probably the most asked question, and it always is. It was the same thing with Copilot. Hi Frederick, I was curious if you, you think that Chat GPT will replace us and take our jobs in the future. Thank you. Is it really that easy to uh, to get the uh, like f fear in fear of life into people to just present something that maybe possibly can be a threat to your livelihood as a software developer and all of a sudden that's the only thing that you that people can think about uh, I mean. I just don't get it. Does like it's like I'm assuming that these questions are asked by people who are not really they don't really know what uh, software or like they might be completely fresh into the field or like they don't understand like the basics of how these things work. Let me try to break it down again because this is like video number something something I don't know I made on this because the question keeps on coming up. Um, anywho, so. The reason why I don't think that you have to worry so much about ChatGPT or Copilot or any future AI, at least not now, going coming in and taking your job, is because fundamentally the way that AI works today is based on user input. What, uh, and why is that significant? That seems obvious, right? Yeah, that should seem obvious to you. But the thing that people seem to not understand is that you can ask an AI to write you an essay on a topic, or you can ask it to should help you debug your code, show it some code and ask what's the problem with it and so forth and so forth. But you cannot ask an AI to, AI to build Facebook and set up all the infrastructure and set up and uh, set up all the necessary telemetrics that it's going to need in order to know if a system is working, yes or no. It's not going to know how to integrate the say metrics gathering for your business clients or the like, Google uh, tag manager or whatever or add that custom script or that custom case to that piece of functionality that you need because the AI doesn't know how to speak business and convert that into code. It does not and it will never understand that because a business person that's that's the essence of what the software developer does guys you are translating functionality like business requirements things that the company wants to achieve with a given system into code most of the abstraction names the class names all everything you you create these are things that like this took a while that we, this is what domain driven design is about for example that we try to model our systems to have the same sort of names as the common tongue of like the vocabulary that is used within your company so that it will be easier for you to talk about the system. Uh, but the AI doesn't know that. How would it? So if, you're, if you're, uh, your manager comes in and says that yeah we need to uh, update this functionality here uh, we need it by this, uh, this day and this day, how will the AI know what part of the code to go and fix and how to make that update without a fairly in-depth description of what is supposed to happen because the the reality is guys that the AIs are these models they are trained on enormous amounts of uh, uh, reference data and your system although it may like there might be a like I don't know, I want to think about how many examples of code that the, the AIs are looking at. They are still not at a state where they can take any arbitrary input from someone and then just figure out exactly how something should work. Because the bigger the problem grows, the more abstract it becomes, the more difficult it will be for the AI to find to to get to the correct. Uh, conclusion or like to get to the correct state that it's necessary you could in theory probably and I've seen some people who talked about like doing cool stuff like using like say uh, copilot or cloud 9 or something like that and using things like um, chat GPT to code a feature by guiding the AI 
to the correct conclusion, basically just writing the code for the AI and asking, okay, what do I do now? How do I make this thing work? And sort of uh, making these uh, applications work by just using those two tools. And so it becomes a really cool exercise in like how far can you actually go by just having the AI help you along. And that I definitely think that you can see more and more of, for sure. I mean, I even said so a while back, like the number one use case for ChatGPT and like Copilot and stuff like that is definitely going to be like every time you get one of these weird code tests where like it's like a standard lead code question or something like that, you're probably going to be able to use one of them to solve that sort of problem. And uh, that's the thing that I think that you should think about uh, because when we get into the space of maintaining an entire system, I think that most people are afraid of something they don't truly understand. The AI does not have, as I said, the ability to write the entire system by itself. It's going to need someone to tell it how and what to do. It's going to be able to maybe make the code, but it's need, it needs guidance. And your fancy suit business person, CEO, or whatever, that person doesn't know that. How would it? Like, it would there's no way because they doesn't actually know what the code does and all they can do is sort of vaguely describe it and that process is a two-way street right when you sit down with your customers and your stakeholders as a software developer you may not think about it so much but that's what we call grooming and preparation of stories a lot of the code and the, the functionality that goes into a product comes from the the interaction between the software developer and the business client because the business clients they can usually just express vaguely what it is that they want and then it requires a, a pair of you to sort of talk it through and see if you can get down to the details of how things should work and then you need to go to even more details when it's time to actually write the software so having an AI just replace you and do that sort of thing at this stage based on the AIs that I've seen never never ever not as it is right now, but at the same time, I don't think that because this fear it just keeps coming back, guys. AI will take over. I promise you, it will. Maybe not now, but it will come. A, there will come a day where the AIs that you're dealing with are got have gotten to this point where they can actually basically take input from practically anybody and generate enormous amounts of value like basically do all these things. I like to say to people that the developers seem to be the ones, but it's because we are of course exposed to this stuff quicker than anybody else because we're sort of involved in it. So they start thinking about themselves first. Oh shit, this thing is going to take over my job. And I go, you want to be scared of being out of a job? Imagine the impact that ChatGPT, for example, has today, where it can literally, at this point, have a fairly normal conversation with the person. Now, who does that for a living? Well, there's quite a lot of professions where that is the main thing that is going on. Now, imagine if you add a company's business logic to that system. In other words, it knows how to talk to your customers. It knows how to tell you about different product offerings, different options within services, and like how to get in hold of people. That's all of support work, basically. A big part of it. And guess what chatbots and like this big industry that we're trying to establish around doing exactly that is all about. Do you think that they are in a worse position or a better position than you are? I would say that they are, it's more likely that you will see AI go into areas where knowledge or knowledge about a system or a company or a business or something like that is basically the main thing that you're doing. So the AIs that you will see most likely starting to work their way into the like to the human interactions that we have today are very more that's uh, going to start most likely in those areas much quicker than it's going to get to that point where you have specialist knowledge where you actually have to create something that is fairly let's just say the process of creating software is fairly complicated and most people think it's just about the coding but it's not just about the coding it is about understanding how a system should work and then actually creating that uh, uh, based on a specification that is completely non-technical, it's not a specification whatsoever because the code is what we use to express to the computer what the system should do but we are responsible for architecturing that code that's the um, bottom line
So what I want you to take away from this is that no, I don't think that in the near, like you're not in any meaningful time, you're going to have to worry so much that ChatGPT is going to replace you as a software developer because fundamentally there is no way for an AI today to take a very loose like one line spore specification and then figure out how to do everything within the system. You can, if with you give it the right level of guidance, which is usually what re basically requires a software developer to do or a very diligent, like very hard working non-technical person or something like that who might be able to use the AI and we I've seen like examples of that where within enough uh, guidance the AI can absolutely it can absolutely write the code for you for sure but the time it takes for you to do that and the knowledge it takes for you to do that is still at the same sort of level you would basically have to have not maybe to the exactly the same extent but in a rough ballpark at the very least you're basically going to have to be someone who understands the code to uh, understand the coding to begin with which is not going to scale like there you can't create an industry based on that it's going to take too long and it's going to be too hard for people to be trained into doing that will there come a time when that is possible absolutely I'm 100% sure that that's going to happen. AI is, there is no stopping it at this point, I would say. And it's going to get to the point where you can have a full-fledged, you can basically today, you can basically have a conversation with an AI to a very good level, I would say. It's not at the level yet where you can ask it to just go and do things and so forth. It's not like at, you know, the movie level. But I definitely think that, you know, so as to say in Iron Man and things like that, you will have a Jarvis level understand uh, AI uh, at some point. Maybe not today, maybe not in 10 years, but it's definitely going to come. And the people who are most likely are going to see that effect the first are the people who, as I said, primarily work in areas of the IT where knowing, basically knowing what information to show to the user or to tell them about offering offers, products, etc, etc. These are lower thresholds or it's a lower bar for an AI to learn how to do that and actually make value. And that's definitely something that might be a risk for someone. But it's I mean, it's not that that can't happen for coding or medicine or something even more advanced. It's just that it, you have to think about where can you start, like what's reasonable. And sooner or later, I really hope, I think so as well, we're going to have company-specific AIs. We might actually have AIs where you, uh, you literally are we're talking to an AI that knows everything about geography or different topics within society and so forth and can basically teach your kids or teach you or should tell you about all these t different types of things or different restaurants and things like that and actually have these sorts of conversations and those can probably also be merged into more advanced AIs and before you know it there's terminators walking around on the on the streets and yeah I think that that's coming but I don't think that you have to be doing the thing that everybody does which is you always you shit your pants as soon as something seems to threaten your livelihood it's a better approach i think for you to understand that everything is transient and try to think about it this way set yourself up for a life learning a lifelong learning policy and adapt when things come your way and don't overthink it don't get scared by things that you seem to not really you know, yeah, this could happen, but you mean you could get a nuclear bomb up your ass tomorrow as well. Uh, are you going to go around worrying about that as well? Think about it. Have a great day.